Welcome to another Titus Timeout Podcast. My name is Cameron West and I am a Terminal Unit and Underfloor Application Engineer here at Titus. Today I would like to talk to you about water flow fundamentals, specifically turbulent flow versus laminar flow of water through a hydronic reheating coil. The industry standard for an air reheat at the terminal unit is either electric reheat with electric coils or hydronic water coils in which hot water passes through. The Titus Terminal Unit application team answers many calls on what an appropriate gallon per minute or GPM rate would be to use on an hydronic coil. It seems more building engineers are moving toward a lower GPM to help with building efficiency. This is where we get the question of laminar versus turbulent water flow. The definition of turbulent flow is a high velocity, irregular fluctuation, and highly disordered group of molecules. The definition of laminar flow is low velocity, regular fluctuation, and highly ordered group of molecules. I'm going to do a demonstration of laminar versus turbulent flow. What we are looking at is a kitchen faucet, and now I'm going to turn it on very lightly to create a low velocity water stream. Now, if you notice, we have a very nice streamline going. The water looks to be very straight and clear, almost see-through. It does not appear to be rough or irregular, and it is very uniform. Just a nice straight streamline, which means the molecules are in a highly ordered state. We can remember from the definition that laminar flow is a highly ordered accumulation of molecules. Now, let's increase the velocity of the streamline. You can see now the streamline begins to become uneven. Now you can see the streamline turns white and very rough and bumpy. The streamline has now entered the turbulent flow state. We can recall from the definition that turbulent flow is a very highly irregular and unordered state of molecules, which can be observed through this streamline of water. You can see that we have increased the velocity and a GPM is much greater than the laminar flow state. First, let's discuss how a hot water coil operates during heating mode. During a call for heat, the hot water is sent from a local boiler within the facility to supply all of the units with hot water. Once a command is sent to the actuator on the supply water valve, the actuator opens the valve allowing water to pass through the coil until the room or space temperature is satisfied. At this time, the water supply actuator will close the valve allowing the flow of water to stop, thus discontinuing the heating of air. Now, let's look at how running a high and low GPM can help or hurt your heating capability. As mentioned previously, during a call for heat, hot water passes through the water coil to allow the transfer of heat to the air passing through it. This is where, through the laws of thermodynamics, we effectively heat the passing air that is delivered to the space of heat demand. Running the correct GPM through the water coil is critical to heat transfer and building efficiency. Running the GPM that is high will allow for a good heating output but the efficiency of heating a large amount of water to circulate through the coil is not very cost effective and not energy efficient. Running the GPM too low will create a very low heat transfer. We have to remember that air is constantly passing through this water coil and if water takes a very long time to make a complete pass from the supply to the return, the water is no longer hot or even warm. This causes air temperature to change very little, thus ineffectively heating the space. Titus gets asked, how low can the GPM be? The answer is, it depends. 
we have to find a happy medium between laminar and turbulent flow in order to effectively heat our space temperature. A GPM too low, the water will enter the laminar state, which is inefficient for heat transfer. A GPM too high, and the building hot water system becomes very energy inefficient. I hope you enjoyed today's Time Out podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear future exciting Titus Timeout podcasts.